I'd like to welcome everybody today. I think uh, you all know me by now. My name is Tyler Miller. And uh, to start off today, I want to talk about a couple things. I'm up here as a farmer today. Today is National Farmer's Day, if you didn't know. And it's also the last day to register to vote in the state of Missouri, so better get that done today. And I'm going to be talking to you about how dicamba herbicide is going to revolutionize the ag industry. And what we're mainly going to be talking about here is uh, soybeans and herbicide with soybeans. So this is some stuff uh, on my own farm, just checking stuff as it goes along. And then I have some product that I brought in for you. So um, the objectives, which were, are listed on the <coughs> which hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to get. Explain what dicamba herbicide is. Identify how this is going to change the agriculture industry. And then I want you to be able to recognize what this means for you as a, as a consumer. Uh, because this, this stuff is pretty important and everybody uh, has to do with everybody. Okay. Um, again, some background. Me, I'm an ag systems management major. Uh, I work on a large farm in uh, west of Boonville when I go to school here. Um, I own my own small farm. I uh, do row crop production, that's it right now. Hopefully trying to expand in some other avenues when I get out of school. And so yeah, I've always been involved in agriculture and this stuff that I'm talking about is in everyday life with me financially and responsibility and you know just being a steward of the land. Uh, from what I've gathered through meeting you guys and stuff like that in our audience analysis, there's a kind of a five to four split, if you put a ratio to it, of ag to non-ag backgrounds in this classroom, which is really good for um, what we're trying to talk about here. Um, the audience, they're all consumers, all of you guys, this ha all has to do with you. You guys buy products made from soybeans and they have chemicals in them. So, and then most of you are ag majors, so you are gonna continue on um, with this knowledge later on down the road, so it's a big deal. It's, there's some pictures of me and and some soybeans, and then just on my small farm, I just planted like 115 acres of soybeans this year, and I have a trailer load full of seed there, and, uh, the soybean seed that I planted, and that's not even all of it. So just on 115 acres, and most of that you're talking like $65 a bag, so lots of, lots of money goes in. Okay, what is dicamba herbicide? Um, dicamba is a product that's going to be coming out as soon as it gets as soon as it gets approved. Um, herbicide is a herbicide that's used to kill broadleaf plants, which are going to be most of your weeds like this that are pretty tough to kill. This is pigweed that I picked this morning. Uh, that's why it's still pretty fresh. Um, dicamba. Um, as a chemical, what it does is it mimics the natural plant hormone called auxin, and basically that makes the plant want to um, grow rapidly, and then the cells just divide uncontrollably, and therefore it puts like stress on the um, like the vascular structure of plants. So it's kind of it's kind of like instant cancer if you want to think about it for the plants, and they just die. So it, this is used for post-emergent application. This application is going to be after the plants have already um, came up. It's not going to be a, a pre-application um, spray that you put down. So, and it's, again, it's not um, currently approved. Um, Monsanto, well, dicamba has been um, known with the EPA since 1967, and it's actually in over 400 herbicide products that are out there right now, but Monsanto came out with their new Roundup Ready Extend 2 soybeans, which they're not just um, approved for a Roundup herbicide spraying post application, but it'll also withstand the dicamba, and Monsanto's developing that special chemical right now, and it's been approved by the EU, I think, but we're still waiting on Chinese buyers to approve it before we could commercially market it. Um, but what this uh, has, which I'll talk about in the next slide, it has some unbelievable potential for um, our econ 
economy and everything else. So, how is <coughs> that camera herbicide going to change the ag industry? Well, this is going to change the ag industry in many ways. The GMO soybeans have had such a great um, start. The growth has been almost un, uh, unfathomable. It's it's just literally if you put it on a graph, it's like almost straight up uh, until recent years, kind of starting to. Uh, tear off as you know land and other resources like that run out but the when growers used to um, just start out with this with this stuff we didn't have chemicals like Roundup and anything like that to spray our weeds to kill post emerge so the farmers would start with a clean slate with bare ground and they would go in and cultivate and then uh, plant and then cultivate between the rows and then keep continue doing that until the crops would get too tall to drive over. And then you have uh, Roundup that came along which enabled us to increase our um, production, increase population and things like that. And then Roundup came out in like 1990, well it came out in the 60s but it was first um, used in soybeans. Um, like in 1996 as far as like post merge and then in more recent years uh, we had Liberty Link come out for weed control which that became really popular about 2009-2010 that's kind of what's taking over Roundup right now and then now we have um, the Extend soybeans coming out which uh, are going to work with the Dicama chemical and basically why this has to keep evolving is because over time these weeds become resistant to the chemical and that's a humongous problem that farmers face. So, and then um, if this chemical does get approved, it's going to change the economy so much because they're going to be shifting, shifting products, it's new inventory, tons of new jobs, Monsanto's going to be hiring so many people, more seed sales and stuff like that and they're going to need more young people that have knowledge about this and then uh, again, the continued uh, adaptability for weed control is just an absolutely a huge thing. Um, what does this mean for you as a consumer? Well, everybody consumes soybeans, whether you know that or, or not. I mean, in, in your everyday life, you're consuming several a day because um, soybeans are used in uh, many things, but soy oil is actually the most common, or the second most common type of cooking oil, besides uh, behind palm oil. And then you've also got um, soy biodiesel, which um, soy biodiesel, you know, they're pushing that as a as a green, um, clean alternative to fossil fuels and such. But what a lot of people don't know is that, as far as ethanol and biodiesel goes. A lot of that's really just a government like subsidy for farmers to kind of um, spend money in that area of the market. And then in turn, um, some of the companies that are making <coughs> ethanol and biodiesel, they're actually making more money in some areas on the byproduct, like the soybean holes and stuff that's left over. And in turn, that gets turned into enormous amounts of animal feed, which um, as many of you know, the food just goes on down the chain, you know, the cow eats the grass, you eat the cow, and and such. So, um, as far and then relating that issue back to it, as far as the consumer, um, that there's always that health concern that this chemical is going to get stuck in this food, and you know, it's going to poison me and and whatnot. And what um, researchers have found is that there's um, actually hardly any trace of, of this chemical left over and it's uh, considered like not a major toxin to humans unless you just like open the chemical straight up out of the bottle and start drinking it or stuff. There's always the typical precautions about hands and contact with the skin and, and things like that. But the biggest issue with it actually, which a lot of people don't know about except for producers, is the volatization of this uh, dicamba herbicide. It could actually pick up and drift and move around really easy. And 
So that's causing a lot of issues for growers, and that's another reason why it's on pause to get approved. But once um, we learn to practice the right um, the right methods to control that, then it's going to get approved. Um, so, and then as a consumer, increased production. Obviously, if this is another alternative for weed control, so that we don't have weeds like this because. This is a, a pig weed right here and very common in the state of Missouri and what another one around here that people constantly fight is the water hemp. I'm sure even if you don't farm or don't know somebody you probably heard somebody around here cussing about water hemp and the, these weeds have become uh, resistant to the roundup and stuff over time because and it's getting to the point now where if they're literally like in some cases over like four or five inches tall, it's impossible to kill unless you just apply way more chemical than you're supposed to. And then if you do that, then that's not right for the environment and everything else. So, um, but yeah, that's a lot of concern as far as that goes. So, um, I hope you've been following along with your <coughs> show. We're going to do some review right now. So the first objective was to explain <coughs> what the dicamba herbicide is. Does anybody have that one? Yeah. Uh, it's the next generation herbicide that uses oxen to uh -huh. kill weeds. Uh-huh. Correct. Okay. So herbicide used to kill broadleaf weeds is kind of the thing I was trying to get. Um, next was identify how this is going to change the agriculture industry. Anybody? Yeah. Creates new jobs. Inside. Yeah, it's going to create new jobs. That's one of them. Uh, industry growth and more weed control options. And then, um, rec does anybody uh, recognize what this means for them as a consumer? Uh, anybody? How about you? Um, what does it mean for you as a consumer? Uh, health risks, I guess. But it's not health risk. Feeds feedstock. Right, it livestock yeah. um, can eat this, you know, in turn and, and stuff. It, it, it all all this chemical and stuff. It takes hours and hours of research and days of actually doing this. But what people need to know is that this stuff does get in their food, and then that way you can make choices for yourself. You know what you're going to buy. If you're going to go organic or you're going to go commercial, and you need to know what that is, uh, so you can make a safe and knowledgeable choice for yourself. So, yes, you consume lots of soybeans, and you need to be informed. So, very good. So that's it. 